Okay, so I'm going to have a try at doing test one of Physics 1001 and let's see how it goes. Hopefully you get some ideas from this about how to do these tests so that you can give us the best idea of your actual physics ability. So let's go. So first of all I need the answer sheet so I go to the back and tear off the answer sheet. Cool. Now I might just have a quick look through the paper just to see what's in it. Okay, so we've got a thermal expansion problem there. We have an ideal gas pressure volume problem there. Seems good. We have a problem here about the thermal speed of particles, which should be fine. Uh, here we have a problem about mixing things with different temperatures and you know, that sort of stuff. And here we have a problem which is about heat conduction. We've got a copper rod and we're going to put one in one temperature, one in the other, and say how much heat is conducted. Ah, now, here we have a PV diagram. Now these are my favourites, I love PV diagrams, so there we are. And so the processes 1, 2, 3 and 4 are all described here. And then we ask to rank them, so that's the question about the PV diagram. That's about heat transfer in the PV diagram. And here's a calculational question about the final volume. Okay, then we've got an entropy problem involving an isothermal expansion. Okay, don't know about that. And lastly we have an ideal gas. Let's see, we'll ask heat and thermodynamics question. An ideal gas taken from initial final state. Ah, okay, so this is a question about what are things are dependent on the path you take and what things are state variables. Okay. Then we've got mechanics, which one of these is the expression for valid expression of units for energy. Then sig figs question. Then a block on an inclined plane question. Then a question about tension. And lastly, a question about acceleration here. <sighs> okay. It's all right. I think in the circumstances I'm just going to work through it line linearly. So um, let's get started. So coefficient of linear expansion of steel, notice the linear is emphasized, is that, and the coefficient of volume expansion of cooking oil is that. A cooking pot is completely filled with litre of cooking oil at 25 degrees C, then it's heated to 145, how much oil will spill? Okay, so different expansion rates, hence the spillage of oil. So the change in volume of the pot is going to be equal to its initial volume, 1.00 litres, times the volume expansion coefficient which is going to be three times the linear expansion coefficient times the temperature change 145 minus 120 minus sorry 25 and calculation 1 times 3 times 11 exponent minus 6 times brackets 145 minus 25 close brackets equals okay so the pot increases by volume by 0 0.00396 litres which is basically 4 mils 4 millilitres okay now change in volume of the oil is equal to 1.00 times now they give us the volume expansion there, it's 
So it's 0.53 times 10 to the minus 3, and we times it by the temperature difference. And in this case, we're going to get 1 times 0.53 exponent minus 3 times brackets 145 minus 25 brackets equals and we get 0 0.0636 which is about 64 mils so therefore the pot expanded by 4 mils the oil by 64 mils so the overflow will be 60 mils so we'll go with B B on the paper okay no, we always start off with an easy one. Now, this next one is really easy. It's one of these ones where you look at it and you should get the answer. So, well, close. Let's have a look at it. We've got an ideal gas at 10 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascal. It's got a volume of 2.5 cubic meters. Pressure is raised to 300. In other words, the pressure is tripled. So if the temperature didn't change at all, and you triple the pressure, the volume will go to one third of what it was. But the temperature is raised to 30. Now, don't think that the temperature's tripled. It went from 283 Kelvin to 303 Kelvin. That's not a very big increase. So what we've got is a small increase in the volume because of the temperature and a big decrease to a third because of the, the um, pressure. So 2.5, a third of 2.5. 2.5 divide 3 is 0 0.833. So it'll be a bit more than that. Okay. So it could be 1.12 or 0.892. Okay. Um, so there I've just, that's the pressure. If I multiply that now by the 303 degrees divided by uh, 283 degrees, then I get 0.892 and that's the answer. Okay. Note that if I was in a hurry, I would simply go that it can't be that, it can't be that, it can't be that. I'll guess between these two. Okay. Next one. So let's see, we'll put that in. That was D. D. Next one. Initially, the thermal speed of the particles in a sample of an ideal monotope of gas is 500 meters a second. Pressure and volume are each doubled, while the number of moles of the gas is kept constant. The final thermal speed of the particles is closest to. Okay. So if you double the pressure and double the volume, then by PV equals nRT the temperature will have gone up by a factor of 4. We know that the temperature is proportional to the average energy of the particles. So we know that a half mv squared is proportional to the temperature. So if we multiply the temperature by 4, then we're going to have to multiply the volume by 2, because 2 squared is 4. So we, we Volume, volume, velocity, not volume. Velocity by 2. So, which velocity is 2 times it? E is 2 times it, okay? Again, if you're in a hurry, alright, you double the pressure, you double the volume, you've clearly increased the temperature, so it can't be the same and it can't be less, and you would left with those two choices, okay? So, so even though to get the right answer in each of these two questions we've had to actually do the calculation, to get down to a 50-50 split we haven't had to do any calculations. We've just used our knowledge about how things work. Alright, so now the messy one. Um, <sighs> Alright. So there's no no choice about this, you just have to do the calculation. So, we just do it. So let's say, so heat lost by the water, okay? Well, basically, it's 0.25 kilograms 
times the temperature difference, which is 25 to 0, times 419 naught. And I'll write this down. So 0.25 times 25 times 419 naught equals 26,187.5 joules. So that's the amount of heat that we've got to take away from the water. How much heat do we get from the ice as it warms up to zero? Well, that's going to be um, we don't know how much. Okay, so we're going to have mass of ice times the temperature difference, 20 degrees times specific heat of ice. Okay, that plus the mass of ice times the melting, the latent heat, times 334 by 10 cubed, and that must be equal to the heat lost by the water, 26187.5. Okay, so you can see it's straight out algebra, and so we get mass equals 26187 divided by 20 times 2100 plus 334 times 10 cubed. Okay. Calculator. Divide brackets. 20 times 2100 plus 334 times Oops, 10 cubed, close brackets, equals 0 0.077, blah, blah, blah. Ooh. Now, in other words, 77 grams. Am I happy? No. Why not? Because it's not near one of the answers. I mean, it's nearest to 70 grams, but it's not very close. I'm wondering if I did anything wrong. Hmm, <sighs> okay. Look, it's closer to 70 grams than anything else, so I'm going with that. Then I might check it. Just go through again. So 0.25 times 25 degrees times 419 naught. That's correct. Okay. So we've got that. And then we've got the mass of ice times 20 degrees difference to get it to zero times 2100 specific heat plus the mass of ice times 334 times 10 cubed is equal to that. Okay. So divided by brackets 20 times 2100 plus 334000 close brackets equals oh okay 69.6 yeah, so I did something wrong okay 0 0.0696 which is approximately equal to 0 0.07 which is 70 grams okay I'm much happier now so rule of thumb the real answer is likely to be close to one of these so now I'm happy. Good, move on. Okay, so we've got a pipe and it's insulated so heat can't escape through its surface, only through the ends. And one end is a temperature of 100 degrees, the other end at zero. And this is the thermal conductivity. The ice at the cold end melts at the rate closest to. Okay, so it's a bit complicated. So first of all, let's work out the 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 um, power flow through it, okay, the heat flow, well, it's going to be the conductivity times, now it's going to be proportional to the area, it's going to be proportional to the temperature difference, and obviously if it's longer it'll be less, so it's going to divide it by the length, okay, 
and so I go 401 times the area is 10 centimeters squared which is um, there's a hundred centimeters equals one meter so 10,000 centimeters squared equals one meter squared so therefore 10 centimeters squared is equal to 10 to the minus 3 meters squared so that's equal to 401 times 0 0.001 square meters times the temperature difference which is 100 divided by the length which is 1.2 and I get a heat flow of 33.4 joules per second okay so now to melt ice you need 334,000 joules to melt one kilogram which is a thousand grams so divide by a thousand we, we need, you need 334 joules to melt one gram so you need through so we've got 33.4 which is one tenth of that so therefore 33.4 joules will melt 0.1 gram and this is the heat flow in joules per second so we'll melt 0.1 gram per second so it's a blank page I didn't need okay now to my favorite which is everyone's favorite PV diagrams isn't it beautiful okay so this is isobaric equal pressure going from here to here if you're going to keep the pressure the same while expanding a gas increasing its volume you're going to be warming it up so you can see we've gone from whatever temperature this is 500 to a warmer temperature it doesn't say what we probably don't need to know process 2 is an isothermal expansion that means isothermal temperature stays the same and you can see we're following an isotherm here temperature staying at 500 kelvin the whole time easy peasy Process 3 is an adiabatic expansion. In an adiabatic expansion, no heat is transferred, so the gas does work in expanding, but since no heat's coming in, it must cool down at the same time. So here we've got an adiabatic expansion from there to there. Beautiful. And last, an isochoric cooling. Isochoric equal volume. So if we want to keep the volume the same while we cool, the pressure will have to fall. Okay, so, right, rank the processes according to the change of internal energy. Now, internal energy is just temperature, isn't it? Okay, so this one, they all started at the same temperature. This one ended up at the highest temperature, that one at the next highest temperature, and both of these ended up at the same temperature because they're on an isotherm, 400 Kelvin. So, therefore, it's one and two and then three and one and two one's the biggest two's the next and three and four are equal okay beautiful easy B turn it over now rank the processes according to the heat transferred into the gas greatest first okay heat transferred into the gas so let's have a look at them okay so, first of all, I can say that the adiabatic one, 3, involves transferring no heat into the gas, because that's the definition of adiabatic. This one, the isothermal one, you have a situation where the temperature hasn't changed, it's expanded, so you put heat in. But this one, here, you've obviously put the most heat in here, because the amount of work done is that shaded area there. And, even, and that's the most work done by any of the processes and yet it still finishes at the highest temperature so definitely the most heat for one then two then three and then you can obviously see that where three no heat goes in four you actually have to take heat out so one's the greatest then two then three then four so looking at the answers one two three four is d 
so 7 is D. Okay, if 8, if the volume of the gas in the initial state was a cubic metre, then the final volume of the gas after any of the processes, 1, 2 or 3, is closest to. Okay, so we start here, and after any of these processes, 1, 2 or 3, we want to find what the final volume is. Well, to my mind, um, ooh, what do we use? What do we use for that? We would need to know, one's no use to us, because we don't know what that temperature is. Two is, I think, not any use to us because for it to be useful to us, I think I'd have to know the, the initial and final pressures, which I don't know. But three, I think, is useful because, and I hate to do this, but I'm going to formula hunt and I'm going to go, look, I have got a formula that says T V to the gamma minus one is a constant for an adiabatic process. And in this case, it's a monatomic gas with gamma equals to five thirds. So I can say T V to the two thirds T1 V1 is equal to T2 V2 to the two thirds. And so I can say I've got five hundred times now what did they say V1 was? 1. 500 times 1 to the 2 thirds is equal to T2 which is 400 times V2 to the 2 thirds. So we get V2 to the 2 thirds is equal to 500 over 400. Okay. So just write that over here. V2 to the 2 thirds equals 500 over 400. And okay, so 1.5 raised to the power 2 divided 3 is 1. Point, which is this is 1.25. Okay, so that gives me 1.3. Let's try 1.4 raised to the power 2 divided 3. That gives me 1.25. That's pretty close. So this was about 1.3. Let's try 1.3. 1.3 raised to the power 2 divided 3. That gives me 1.19. And clearly these will be less. So it's going to be B. Okay, so B is correct. So, 8B. Right, okay. 9, I'd probably, if I was doing the test, I'd probably not like this question. I think this question is hard. But nonetheless, I'm sure you can do it. Okay. You've got 15 moles of an ideal gas undergoes an isochoric ex isothermal expansion which triples its volume. The entropy change for the gas in this process is closest to. Okay, now, I'm going to go look at my formulas because I don't know. Okay, so here's a formula for entropy change. It doesn't look too useful. I was hoping there would be something really nice about it, but nothing really useful about it at all. Okay. So look, I'm going to come back to it. Okay. I'm just not happy. Mark there. Mark there. Come back to it. Don't want to do it. It's too hard. I could get easy marks elsewhere, which I'd miss out on if I wasted time doing that question. So let's have a look at the next one. So we have an ideal gas is taken from initial state to a final state by an unspecified process. Which of the following quantities is independent of the process and depends only on the initial and final states? 
So these are state variables. And temperature change, yes. Heat added, no. Work done, no. Internal energy change, yes. Entropy change, yes. Okay, because temperature, internal energy and entropy are state variables. They depend only on the state and so the change will depend only on the initial and final states. But as you've seen, heat added and work done depend on how you get from one state to the other. So 1, 4 and 5 is my answer. So for 10, I put C. Uh, which one of the following is a... Oh, we're on to mechanics questions. It's a valid expression for the units of energy. Okay, there's two ways I can think to do this. One, I can think that, you know, work is equal to force times distance, right? So that is newtons times meters. And newton is a kilogram meter second to the minus two. And I multiply that by meters, meters. And that gives me kilograms meters squared second to the minus two, which is D. If I didn't like that one, I could say, well, energy, kinetic energy, is a half mv squared. So therefore the units are kilograms times meters squared per second squared, which is that one too. So it's D, okay? You know, I can do it another way if you like. I can say, when you lift something up, the potential energy gain is mgh. So that's kilograms times g, which is meters per second squared, times h, which is meters. And you get the same again. I think you get the idea. <laughs> there are many, many ways of doing that. A very easy question. Boy, am I glad I'm not still sitting there trying to do question 9, which is really hard. Which of the following is expressed to three significant figures? One, two, three. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. That one is not expressed to three significant figures. Leading zeros don't count in significant figures. So, 12E. What a gift. Thank you, Ralph. Now we have a block sliding down an incline. How long does it take to travel a distance of one meter? Okay. 30 degrees, boom, boom. gravity acts like that. It's a frictionless surface, so therefore the only force that, that can be exerted by the surface is at right angles to the surface, like that. So therefore, we need to find out what the component of gravity acting down the plane is. Now, it's going to be mg is gravity and we're going to have to multiply by either the cos of 30 or the sine of 30 to get the component of that force acting down the plane and if this angle was zero so it was dead flat then there would be no force acting along the plane so we need to have something here which when the angle is zero it's zero which is sine 30 so therefore, our force acting down the plane is mg sine 30 degrees. Therefore, our acceleration is equal to g sine 30 degrees, which is equal to 4.9 meters per second squared. Because sine of 30 is a half, because everyone remembers that. So now you have to say, how long does it take to go one meter? Well, s equals a half at squared. So one meter is a half times 4.9 t squared. Therefore, t equals two, two over 4.9 square root of, okay, let's do it. Two divide 4.9 equals square root equals 0.64 seconds. Okay, that one, uh, 0.64 d. All right, now, the tension question, um, it's a C, F. If you didn't know that, go and study. C, 
It's the definition of tension, right? I can't save you there. Let's, but I will, I will. Let's go through it very, very simply. Here's a rope. And at this end, we have someone exerting a force F. And at this end, we have someone exerting a force F. Okay. And in this situation, the definition of the tension of the rope is that it's equal to F. Okay. Why? Because if you have a little man in here who is actually, you've cut the rope in half and he's actually having to hold the rope in place with his hands, then he needs to exert a force F there and he needs to exert a force F there to hold the rope in place. So the definition is it's whatever force he would have to exert on each side to hold it in place, that's F. Okay. Which comes to the last question, and this question is, is believe it or not, incredibly easy, and basically, but it's incredibly easy and it's not, okay? So the first thing to look at is, we're asked equal masses, they're, they're all equal, and the pulleys and cords are massless and there's no friction, so these, you've got two pulling down, one pulling up, so these will go down, that will go up. So, what's the acceleration of the central mass? Okay, see downwards? Go, go. No downwards one. So it's going to be one of these three. Okay? Now, so we're looking at it, which one is it? Um, well, it's not going to be G, right? Because G is, means if it's going up with acceleration G, each of these is going down with acceleration g because they're attached by a string which means these are falling as though they're attached to nothing and i don't think they're attached to nothing they're actually pulling this up so therefore it can't be g upwards so it's one of these two so if you were guessing you would now guess right and um i would guess a third why well because look at it i've got my total mass is 3m I've got two of these masses are acting in one direction, so they're giving me force 2mg in one direction. One of these masses is actually acting in the other direction, so I'm, I'm going to lose an mg there. So my total force is going to be mg, and so therefore my acceleration is going to be my total force, mg, divided by my total mass, 3m, which is going to be g on 3. Now look, you can do it harder ways, and I would, if I wanted to be sure I was right, if I had time, I would sit there now and do the calculation. And it's, an, it's a straightforward calculation, okay? You would simply say, there's a certain tension in the rope here, and there, and there. And so, if I consider this mass in the middle here, I would say that the acceleration of this mass times its mass must be equal to the net force on it, which is mg downwards, which I'll make the negative direction, plus 2t, okay? Because it's got tension acting up on either side, okay? And then for each of these masses, I would say the acceleration of them times their mass must be equal to minus mg plus t because each of them have only and but these are in opposite directions and I will do some maths and then you get the answer but I'm tired now so I can't do it and also I know I've got this question I left so I'm going to go back but anyway I put in the third g Again though, I just want you to note, without doing very much work, you could eliminate three choices and have a 50-50 guess. If you 50-50 guessed everything in the test, you would get seven and a half out of 15, which is just slightly below the average mark. Okay. So going back to this one, which I didn't like, 
Okay. All right. So heat's going into this gas. It's doing an isothermal expansion and the volume triples. I might draw a picture. Okay. So really all we need to do is find out the amount of heat we're putting in, right? Because given it's isothermal, then the change in entropy is just going to be equal to the heat we added divided by the T, because T doesn't change, so we don't have any complicated integral. So we just need to find out how much heat we put in to triple the volume. Now, if the temperature stays the same and we triple the volume, then PV equals NRT tells us that if this goes up by 3, that's got to go down by a factor of 3. So P ends up going to one third of the pressure. Does this help us? Okay. Uh, so. I'm probably just doing this a really bad way, but I've got to keep trying, so let's see. Okay, so P goes to 30. Um, the internal energy of the gas doesn't change because the temperature doesn't change. So therefore, all the work done by the gas, whatever work is done by the gas, the same amount of heat must be put in. Okay, just let me look at my formulas again and see if Darren's been kind and given me a formula I can use work oh look 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 Darren has given me a formula I can use the work is with a minus sign which could mean anything NRT log V F over V I <gasps> lovely okay so Q the heat I put in is equal to the work I did so it's N R T logarithm V F over VI. That is, that, so Q equals NRT logarithm 3, was a final volume 3. Therefore, Q over T, which is the entropy, entropy is equal to NRT logarithm 3 over T. T's cancel, and we get NR logarithm 3. So calculator, 15 moles times R, 8.315 times natural log of 3 equals 137. Yay! That was not so bad after all. Okay, so for 9 I'm going to put in A. And we're done. Okay. So... I hope that gave you some tips on how to handle it. You'll notice that I used, a lot of the times I used my knowledge about things rather than going straight to a formula. For example, on this question where I wasn't sure, I knew if it was isothermal that the internal energy of the gas didn't change because the temperature didn't change. So therefore the heat added must be equal to the work done. And then I found a formula for the heat added, so I was happy. I'd given more time, I could have worked this out myself, but I didn't need to. So you can see there that you use some knowledge about how things should be. But questions like this, this one, you had no choice, you just had to know um, the formula and use it. But then, questions like this, you could go dum dum dum, knock three out, just got two left. And questions like this, there were three separate different ways of doing it that all gave the same answer, so it was very easy. Alright, we're done.